Well, John, uh, thank you very much, and also thanking for uh, doing the, uh, the, the advert already for tomorrow's session. So this is basically um, uh, a discussion on, um, uh, on state business relations in, um, in, two, uh, in two sessions. I've got a, a paper as well um, where, where we've contributed uh, to, so if you want to have a hard copy, then uh, maybe I'll start um, circulating it now. So I'm at the, um, the Overseas Development Institute uh, in, uh, in, in London. And um, um, we, we've been interested in, uh, in the work on state business relations for some time. And, um, and together with, um, uh, with Kunal Sen, uh, in a research program called IPPG, we, um, we started in 2005 to 2010, uh, we did some work on state business relations uh, in Africa and in India. And um, um, that's also what um, Kunal will talk more on. Um, and uh, we thought it would be useful to um, have a session now where we have an introduction and then where, where Kunal will talk about the academic side of state business relations and, uh, and then where, uh, where we also have a, um, um, a practitioner's view, somebody from, uh, from, the, from the World Bank Lily who, um, who's, who's done uh, work on state business relations itself in, uh, in, in Cambodia, she will no doubt uh, tell, uh, to, uh, to tell you about. Um, and uh, what we hope to do at the end of these two sessions, actually, is also to say, well, um, wh what is the research agenda uh, moving forward? And what are the sort of the policy relevant questions that we, we might want to be asking uh, ourselves? What do we know and, uh, and what, what are possible next steps? So in my, pres in my presentation, in my overview, um, I will talk about um, a, a few things. First of all, I will highlight the renewed interest in industrial policy and the context here of, sort of, in, uh, of uh, structural transformation and job creation is, uh, is, is very important. That's a renew, renewed interest there and also we need to understand um, um, how industrial policy fits in. Um, I will say we know already a lot on the appropriate role of industrial policy in development. We will then make the link to um, um, the, the relevance of state business relations um, for industrial policy. And, uh, and then think a bit about more about what, are, what, are, uh, what characteristics are effective, uh, what are the effective characteristics of, um, of effective state business relations that will lead to, um, to good policy making, to good industrial policy making. Uh, and, and one thing that I, that I will argue is that despite, of course, the fact that, that we've worked on it and others have worked on it, uh, and John Page has got an excellent paper and there will be some other papers, there, there, are, there are still a huge gap in the literature uh, out there. And, uh, and I suppose we, um, th there are two areas where there's been research in this area, and I'll, I'll explain it a little bit, a bit more of it. Um, there has been uh, work from the sort of the political science point of view. Um, how do state and business interact? Um, how, how has this uh, been institutionalized? Um, and on the other side, the economists have looked at this question and sort of how can we measure state business relations, if, if at all, and then how has it led to uh, industri change in industrial policy and how has it led to economic change in, in economic performance. Um, and I will we'll try and finalise with a few ways to, 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 uh, to suggest further types of research. First of all, I'll, uh, I'll talk about the growth policy pendulum um, because I think that, um, um, that we've gone full circle. Uh, or that the pendulum has swung. Um, we started uh, early on um, uh, thinking about uh, we need to manage the economy, and then we moved to, uh, to thinking much more about freeing up the economy and don't think about industrial policy at all, towards now thinking much more of a pr pragmatic view. Uh, so we, f we started out with uh, the structuralist thinking uh, about prebies and so on, uh, thinking through uh, import substitution as a way forward to, um, uh, for, uh, for industrialization. That quickly moved uh, so in the 90s after the, the debt crisis in, the Lat in Latin America and the failure of some of the policies uh, led to, um, to the Washington Consensus. So John Williamson said, well, you need to sort of um, uh, liberalize, deregulate. Um, and that was a 10-point list, and then it became the post-Washington Consensus, a 20-point list. Uh, so that swung to the other side. The growth policy pendulum swung to the other side. Um, the, the World Bank's uh, investment climate report, uh, maybe John knows more on, on, on it, but uh, uh, I think Warwick, I had a discussion with Warwick Smith, and he basically, uh, about the, the presence of market failures, he said, well, what market failures? I can't, I can't see them. Uh, government failures are much more important. And that report doesn't really mention uh, industrial policy. 
uh, or, or, or industrial development, hardly. Um, then in mid-2000s, uh, 2005 around, um, came, came uh, Roderick with, uh, and, 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 and Velasco and Hausmann with the growth diagnostic. And that's, uh, again, a different way of looking at, at the economy. It's saying, well, where are the, binding, the most binding constraints uh, to growth? And thinking in those terms means that you are not thinking about freeing up all constraints at the same time in an economy, but you're thinking specifically about freeing up the most binding constraint, which is, by, by definition, almost a more targeted way of looking at, at, uh, at growth policy. But, of course, are, it's not completely targeted either. You need to do it in a market-friendly way. Uh, so that's more in the middle. Uh, the growth report, um, uh, Danny Leipziger's uh, report and others, um, also were... Um, were um, thinking um, more in terms of, uh, not just in terms of freeing up markets, but also thinking, and they reviewed a number of successful case studies um, uh, of, of, of uh, successful growth uh, experiences, and they mentioned issues like leadership is very, really important. Um, and then we had, um, um, uh, we had a book launch of Justin Lin um, at the... Um, uh, at ODI a couple of months ago, and thinking much more about uh, an active role for, for, for industrial policy, although it, it had a six-step uh, approach towards growth facilitation and uh, growth identification and facilitation. Um, but he, um, uh, some are say, well, you need to go where the market is, so compared to advantages and so on. But others say, well, you need to actively involve the state and, and, and push, uh, push forward, use special economic zones and so on. And of course, there are others that are, are still firmly more on the left, um, so Hajun Chang, for instance, and others. So um, in terms of thinking about industrial policy, um, I think we are now back to, uh, to, uh, to thinking more about industrial policy. And uh, we, we don't dismiss it out of hand. Either say, well, it's the only way to go about, or it's the, it's, uh, we can't do it at all. Um, there's now a much more pragmatic way of, uh, of doing it. Um, and uh, if you think about the literature, and I'll go over it very quickly, uh, I think in this literature on industrial policy, there is um, a general agreement that, there, uh, that uh, there's a presence of market government uh, and uh, coordination failures in, 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 in industrial development, um, and so it relates to skills and technology, and there's also sort of market uh, or information-related uh, market failures. Um, and uh, authors like Pack and Wastel, Stiglitz, Roderick and Lal, who have all, I'd, have all, all suggested there are, um, there is a huge, or there, there are market failures. Um, that need to be overcome. Um, but there are um, still uh, differing and evolving views on the relative importance of market failures vis-a-vis -vis, uh, government failures in, in, in driving, um, driving um, industrial development forward. Uh, so on the one hand, you can say, well, there might be specific market failures out there, but then if the, if the state thinks about a, a, a way of, uh, of, 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 uh, of addressing this market failure, um, whether through intervention or, or a more market-friendly way, it could go wrong, and it has gone wrong, of course. Um, and we actually don't know, we don't have an, a, a right assessment framework to say um, this is how, how, how large market failures are and this is how large government failures are. Um, what we do know from, from sort of uh, historical experiences is that industrial policy has worked in some cases or in some sectors or in some areas at some, some times. And uh, so looking at Ireland, Singapore, Mauritius, Malaysia, for instance, we know that, it, that, that um, certain particular specific policies that target particular sectors have helped in certain circumstances. Um, but we also know that it has failed in many other circumstances. Um, again, I suppose there is a lack of a sort of maybe an assessment framework to, to really assess the... the um, the success of, uh, of industrial policy. Um, but acknowledging that industrial policy could play a, a role in, in, in theory and in practice uh, means that some attention has shifted now to thinking about um, design principles for effective industrial policy. So, so maybe it is uh, the case that, 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 it's, uh, that, it, that industrial policy works as, as long as it's been, uh, been designed well. Um, so Roderick has said something on that. Even the World Bank has now be began to... Uh, um, uh, also talk about it in some of the inclusive green growth publications and in others. Um, uh, Justin Lin would say, well, as long as your industrial policy is, is, is in line with your comparative advantages, uh, latent comparative advantages, it would be all right. Um, so so it's, it's the area that matters. Others might say, um, some others might say, it's actually also the, um, the, um, the, the uh, design principles. But finally, we've begun to think about institutional setting uh, for, for, um, um, for industrial policy making. So that actually, uh, we need to think about 
what are the effective principles uh, for design and what, what lies behind that. So as long as you've got that right, maybe then um, that setting can, can design good policies and that can help uh, drive the, the economy forward. Um, so that's the institutional setting question. And then there are questions about the role of state business relations within this. Um, I'll do that in four, four, four issues. So there's a theoretical and opinion. There are some principles behind, uh, behind uh, benign state business relations, um, and, um, which is more at the historical institutionalist level. And then there are issues about forms and practices of, of state bus business relations. Um, and then, then I've, I have some suggestions for next steps. Um, first of all, think through sort of the, uh, the economic functions of, of state business relations. And there has already been early literature on business associations that, that suggested um, um, a particular sort of that there are market functions or market complementing functions of business associations. They can, uh, there's a price signal, but in addition, if there is a, a, a market failure, uh, there's not enough information um, around or it's dispersed, then a business association can help um, help. Um, um, uh, help uh, address this. Um, and um, in, in the book that, um, that, Sen, uh, that Kunal Sen will, um, uh, has edited and will no doubt talk more about, uh, we've taken that a bit more, um, more, um, uh, more um, uh, formalized and we've suggested, well, there are uh, ways where, um, where, where state business relations could solve uh, market failures and coordination failures and government failures. So they could, uh, for instance, solve, help to solve uh, uh, government failures by making um, governments, um, government spending plans more relevant for private sector needs, for instance, and more appropriate with good quality. Uh, for instance, how could st effective state business relations have an impact on the budget process? Um, how can they engage best? Um, how can they engage best in the reform process? When, when do they have... Um, uh, a, a more um, um, an impact, and and effective state business relations could could help to reduce policy uncertainty, so that you have a framework in talking to each other that you don't um, engage in knee jerk uh, policy um, policy uh, decisions and, and reactions of either side, that it becomes a bit more predictable. Um, the literature on principles behind effective state business relations um, comes from the political scientists uh, corner. And uh, sort of people like Evans, uh, Peter Evans, Max and Schneider. And, uh, and they talked about a number of principles, uh, transparency, reciprocity, credibility, and trust. So if, as long as these principles hold, then um, there is an, a, a, a particular way in which um, uh, state and business uh, can, can, discuss, can talk to each other, can communicate, it can become embedded, and, um, and that can then lead to to um, um, uh, a particular way in, in moving the, um, the economy forward. Uh, Roderick mentioned in his paper on industrial policy uh, three issues of, uh, of, um, of uh, industrial policy processes. So there's policy design, but also thinking about the processes behind it. And he mentioned three issues, political leadership at the top, uh, coordinating the liberating councils, and mechanisms for transparency and accountability. So those are the three principles uh, would need to be there. Um, uh, for an effective process. Um, so, so that's that's sort of on the on the on the high level stuff, and and those are sort of deep institutional ideas. So transparency, trust building is not something you can put in place like that. It it comes uh, in an economy. It, it, it takes a long time uh, to 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 foster this. Um, but practices and forms come in many. Uh, so state business relations come in many forms. Um, they can be highly formal, they can be informal, they can be national, they can be sectorized, they can be ad hoc, they can be regular ways of talking to each other. Um, they, can, they, they can be informed in terms of uh, having position papers in place or not. Um, and they have different functions. And, and there are lots of different categorizations here. And there is, there, there's an interesting question uh, then to think through um, what sort of practices are useful. So if you have you think about the principles behind uh, the deep principles behind state business relations on the one hand, but on the other hand, maybe the practices also help. And, and there are uh, a number of tools that have been developed over time. Um, so the World Bank, uh, you will talk about it, I hope, and uh, ITC and others have thought about sort of the pra uh, some practical tools and say, well, if, if you score high on this, then you're more likely to have an effective state business relations, which are, is more likely to have um, a, a positive impact on, uh, on, on, on the reform process and, on the, and lead to good policy policies, including industrial policies. So two types of studies have looked at this. And um, so the historical institutionalist types of studies, 
um, have, have, have looked at it from the political economy point of view. And so I just mentioned three examples here, um, um, sort of Malawi in, in, in the case of uh, Chinkai Pelletvich, Vietnam, uh, Hubert Smith's done some work on that, and, and Natras and Seeking, also part of this IPPD project, have looked at uh, South Africa. And um, he, they, they here have looked not just at formalized uh, ways of, looking, uh, of, of talking to each other, state business, um, but also looking at informal and what happens in the, long, in the longer term. And uh, particularly in the case of South Africa, for instance, there, there has been a long, uh, um, a long um, standing uh, discussion between big business and government, um, which, which happened already uh, sort of in the 80s and 90s. And that's like it, uh, that has been, uh, been, been continued um, uh, in, uh, so in, more recently. And um, uh, despite efforts to, um, to um, to, to create other ways of, of, of discussing and other forms of public-private dialogue. Um, and, um, um, uh, but, but this has led to insights such as that trust matters, um, that, um, uh, that inf informality uh, matters on, 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 uh, uh, as well as, for, as formal ways of, 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 um, of discussions between the state and the business. And then there's the uh, sort of the more economic uh, uh, angle to the state business relations, and uh, Kunal will talk more on that. But there we, uh, we thought in more detail about uh, maybe we can measure the principles behind effective state business relations. And, and then if we, if we can measure this, maybe we can then uh, say, well, if there's variation in this, if some countries or parts of the countries have done that uh, more effectively and it's, uh, the principles hold, uh, maybe they've been able to, to perform better. Um, and um, there are different ways, uh, again, to do look at this. You can look at it in terms of the whole economy. You can look at it at a micro level, have, have, have small firms um, in, uh, improve their performance if they're linked into networks, into linked, uh, through, through mem membership of as associations and so on. Um, and there were also studies that looked at economic functions of, of, um, of state business relations, such as affecting the budget process in, in, in Zambia. And there's a process behind the budget process, and, uh, and there's a formal way, informal way. Of course, there will be lots of informal discussion between different types of business, different types of, uh, of, of stakeholders and government. Uh, but there's also a formalized way uh, through um, uh, shepherding um, proposals for the budget process, um, uh, or through the, for the budget through a process, and then you can sort of trace those, those proposals and see which ones have had uh, uh, the biggest impact and why. Uh, these literatures have had challenges. Um, think about cause and effect. Uh, what, uh, what has been the cause? What has been the effect? Um, how, how can you measure, uh, measure this? And uh, what has been the, what is the, the, the policy implication of this? So if you think about a deep institutional uh, structures of behind state business relations, and if you agree that trust is very important, um, then what, what, is, what do you do next on Monday morning? Is, is, is of course, then a very difficult question. Um, but both of these trends, I think, are, are very important. And uh, why are they important? So, uh, um, and I want to sort of introduce one example, and maybe Lily can talk more on that. Um, but in the, in, the, in, the, in the Cambodia case, um, there's been a, a government private sector forum has, has been, uh, been promoted, um, uh, has been initialized and promoted uh, an open dialogue between the government and the private sector. And that has been very successful. Um, at least the, com the government of Cambodia itself will acknowledge that it has led to, uh, to, uh, to lots of savings uh, for, for the private sector. And, um, and we looked at this uh, more recently in some work we did with the Asian Development Bank. And, um, and then there were questions about the sustainability of, of the public-private dialogue. And there are questions then about sort of, um, uh, uh, so you can maybe improve the practices of, sta of state business relations, maybe in the short term, and uh, if you support it, maybe through external support. Um, but for how long can you do it, and, how, and on what circumstances does it um, does it uh, come uh, does it uh, become institutionalized? If you if you help the practices, does it become institutionalized, or is it on the other hand, do you need to think through first? Are the institutions right? Are the, the, the basic principles right? And can you then support it? Um, so what are the next steps? And I think that's my, uh, uh, my last slide, uh, John. Um, then we can hand over to, uh, to, uh, to Kunal and Lily for, for more, uh, more discussion on each of these, these trends. Um, um, the, I think in terms of next, ste next steps, um, we, need, we need to think about sort of scaling up. Um, we've, we know already a lot about industrial policy. We know 
um, we've suggested that institutional settings and, and state business relations are, in principle or in, in theory, important for effective uh, policy making. Um, but we, we don't know uh, that much yet and, um, uh, about what works where and how. And we have got uh, a number of case studies, but it's still dispersed. And therefore, I, I suggest uh, two str uh, strands to, to, to think forward. Um, first is, um, is uh, to think about these, these, these core principles and do uh, historical institutionalist types of analyses um, and do, do a systematic analysis on the characteristics of effective state business relations across case studies, and particularly in low-income countries. Um, so we, we know a bit more about maybe the Asian context, less, less about the African context, uh, where there is still distrust among state and business in, in, some, in some quarters. Um, but secondly, I think it's also helpful to, um, uh, to think through the, more the, the practice of state business relations and do more, um, more detailed uh, econometric studies there. And we could even uh, go the, 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 the completely the, uh, to, to the gold standard of, of so-called uh, gold standard of impact evaluation. Maybe even do RCTs. You can say, well, there might be some provinces that, uh, that, that conduct state business relations in some way, maybe in the case of Vietnam. And maybe you can support certain, uh, certain uh, forms of dialogue between the state and the business through um, technical assistance in the form of position papers or, uh, or I, uh, provide the training for, uh, for state business relations or uh, ICT, better ICT forms. And maybe that will then help, uh, help you to, um, um, to, um, uh, to, to, you could then evaluate and say, well, some, you do some and not in others. And that's, of course, uh, one way uh, you could do, but there are lots of other ways uh, through, through which you can do it. And you can need to bring them together um, as well. So let's now move on to, uh, uh, to the other presentations. Um, uh, I've given you sort of an introduction into why I think um, sort of industrial policy uh, is important, but particularly thinking through the, uh, it's important to think about the processes behind industrial policy. Um, and in, within this context, we need to think much more about um, when does, what types of state business relations work best. 